Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and we'll start with a couple of announcements. If you live in driving distance of uh, Wellness Farm Health here in Columbus, Ohio, on April 23rd, the end of this month, we're having a Women's Health Symposium. It's on a Saturday. It's a fun event. From 10 to 2, we have eating, cooking class, health education, women's health issues. And then at, um, uh, I guess it's 10 to 3, and then at 3 o'clock, um, we have spa treatments and appetizers and fun and social engagement, followed by at five o'clock a meeting of the Healthy Girlfriend groups, the Operation Healthy Girlfriend folks, and um, it's a good opportunity to find out about Operation Healthy Girlfriend and also to meet some of the people that are involved in that fabulous social slash educational program. So anyway, April 23rd, if you want information on that, you can go to our website or you can email me at pampopper at msn.com. Second thing, I know it's early April, but really this is the time we start planning for summer semester. Uh, the Diet Lifestyle Intervention course with the celebrity instructors like Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Barnard and Dr. Schultz and Dr. Stanger and the whole lineup uh, will be teaching again this summer. And we have a special package offer, which we do every summer with the Diet Lifestyle course. You can take some additional certification courses uh, as well. And uh, also during summer semester, we're gonna offer three classes um, abnormal psychology, microbiology one, and I'll be teaching one on meal planning for everything from religious observation to people who have uh, specific disease conditions. So if you're interested in any of that stuff or anything else that we do here, because we sure do, lot, do a lot of interesting things here at Wellness Farm Health, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. All right, so today I've chosen a little bit of a lengthy topic that I want to cover in some depth, uh, red yeast rice. And I'm going to call it RYR because the more I say red yeast rice, the more I butcher it. So we'll call it RYR. Um, it's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for hundreds of years. It's used in food products like rice vinegar, pickled tofu, and Peking duck. Historically, from a medicinal standpoint, it's been used to revitalize blood and improve digestion. Most common use, and what you probably have heard it uh, to be used for, is lowering plasma cholesterol levels, but um, is also recommended for conditions like diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and dementia. RYR is made by fermenting rice with a fungus. Its lipid lowering effects are attributed to constituents of RYR called monocolons. There have been 14 different ones identified so far. Monocolon K is considered to be one of the most important and it's chemically identical to Mevacor or Lovastatin, which is a well-known cholesterol lowering drug. Drug. One of the problems with RYR is inconsistency in manufacturing. Um, one analysis of 12 different commercial products showed that the total monocolon content varied from under 1 milligram to 11.15 milligrams per 600 milligram capsule. And the same inconsistency was noted with monocolon K, ranged from less than one tenth of a milligram to um, 10.09 milligrams per 600 milligram capsule. Um, I'll come back to this later. There's a reason why this inconsistency, but the problem is you don't know what you're getting. So if you're actually using this product to lower your cholesterol, um, uh, you may or may not be able to do that, depending upon if you have a product that's virtually, virtually useless or one that has a high monocolon content. Well, one question is how does prescription Lovastatin compare with RYR? Um, uh, RYR? Uh, one study showed that RYR was more bioavailable. Another one showed that RYR was more effective than Lovastatin. And the researchers suggested that this might be due to the fact that um, uh, instead of just monocolon K, when you take RYR, you're getting all of the monocolons and there's some synergy amongst them and other constituents in the RYR as well. So actually, it just goes to the fact that the whole is not just the sum of its parts and when you practice reductionism let's just take the monocolon K out of the product and use it as a uh, as a cholesterol lowering agent better off with all the monocolons and all the other stuff that we know and don't know that's, that would be in something like RYR. Now there are lots of studies showing that RYR is effective for lowering plasma cholesterol and I'll tell you about a few of them. In one study, 52 physicians and their spouses who all had cholesterol levels over 200 uh, milligrams per deciliter were randomized to take RYR or a placebo for eight weeks. 
The ones taking the uh, red, um, red yeast rice showed an average 15% reduction in total uh, cholesterol, 22% reduction in LDL, no reduction in either for those taking placebo. Um, so actually, um, we see that uh, RYR tests a little bit better than prescription drugs do in clinical trials. A meta-analysis of 93 randomized trials that compared RYR with placebo, no treatment, statins, and other cholesterol-lowering substances showed significant benefit, although the researchers noted that there were methodological, methodological um, weaknesses in many of those trials. Nonetheless, the analysis did show that RYR reduced total cholesterol by an average of 35 milligrams per deciliter, LDL cholesterol was reduced by an average of 28.1, and triglycerides an average of 36.3 milligrams per deciliter. Um, they noted that the effect was similar to statin drugs and better than both fish oil and niacin. Side effects were reported in 77 out of the 93 trials, and the incidence, range, um, uh, incidence ranged from a low of 1.3% to as much as 36%. Most common side effects noted were dizziness, reduced appetite, nausea, abdominal distension, diarrhea, gastrointestinal discomfort. There were no serious events reported in this particular uh, group of studies. However, Side effects that can be serious and that are similar to those experienced with statin drugs have been reported. For example, the Italian Surveillance System of Natural Products reported muscle disorders including myopathy in seven patients between 2002 and 2007. Now to be fair, the incidence rate much lower than what you would see for statin drug users. Case reports have included a middle-aged man who developed joint pain and muscle weakness after taking RYR for three months. His lab results showed a moderately elevated creatinine phosphokinase level. When he stopped taking the product, uh, symptoms resolved, his markers returned to normal. When he started taking the product again, symptoms resumed, uh, markers became abnormal again. Another case report involved a 63-year-old woman who presented with severely elevated liver enzymes and hepatotoxicity as a result of taking RYR, both of which resolved after discontinuing the product. The researchers made an interesting conclusion here. They said the choice of an alternative medicine approach in this case subjected the patient to, quote, re-challenge with the official medicine agent that had previously caused uh, mild hepatotoxicity. Physicians should keep in mind that alternative medicine is not always the safest alternative and sometimes is not even an alternative. And I think it's a valid point to make. Um, the assumption, I think, on behalf of a lot of people is that if it's natural or it's non-pharmaceutical, it's therefore safe. Um, it may be safer, but there are side effects. Anything that works, I have to say this, anything that works, um, you're going to have side effects because you can't manipulate one enzyme system or any system in the body without impacting others too. Now, the National Institutes of Health has a lot on their website about RYR. It says the same effects associated with taking statin drugs have been reported in, um, uh, uh, with uh, lovastatin, for example. Statin drug have, reported, have been reported as a result of taking RYR, and these include muscle myopathy, rhabdomyolysis, and liver toxicity. And the NIH states that all of these side effects have been taken, and they say that the product is not safe for pregnant or breastfeeding women. Uh, the NIH also warns about side effects of RYR with other drugs, which include cholesterol-lowering drugs, antibiotics, antidepressants, and antifungal medications. Uh, the NIH site also references the product inconsistencies with an additional caution that I think is worth mentioning. When the culturing of RYR is not done properly and properly controlled, a mycotoxin called citronin can form, which has been shown to cause kidney failure in animal studies. And a 2011 analysis of 11 products showed that four of them contain this mycotoxin citronin. Um, now, sales of RYR are robust in this country, about 20 million in both 2008 and the year 2009. In uh, 1998, and it's kind of in spite of the fact that in 1998, the FDA ruled that uh, RYR products that contained a significant amount of uh, monocolon were considered drugs, not dietary supplements. The FDA issued warning letters to several companies, basically informing them that their products should be marketed as drugs and subjected to the same type of clinical testing um, and not as dietary supplements. 
Um, the problem for the consumer is that, and as I mentioned this earlier, it's just impossible to know what you're getting. Um, the labels don't contain, you don't know if it contains the, the um, ingredient citronin. We do know that random testing shows that over a third of the products contain it. And, um, and you have no idea what the monocolon content um, really is. Part of this is because of the labeling. Um, companies don't want to draw attention to themselves by listing, testing for, and listing the monocolon content on the label of the products because they are afraid that, well, they aren't afraid it will happen. The FDA will come after them for marketing an unapproved drug. So um, the, it, it, the bottom line is that customers, consumers just don't know. So are there circumstances in which the product should be used? It can be argued that the incidence rate for side effects is lower, less severe than with cholesterol lowering drugs, but with the citronin, unknown citronin content, unknown monocolon content, I think it's really too dicey. I actually think that for most people, the issue is mood. If you talk to them about the best way to lower their cholesterol levels, which is through diet and lifestyle change. It works for most people. Um, you're going to have a handful of people in the cholesterol, with the cholesterol issue who are going to need medication because they suffer from what's called famili familial hypercholesterolemia. No matter what they do, their cholesterol remains high. And for those people, they're going to need medication. The rest of everybody else can lower their cholesterol uh, to a protective level without the use of drugs or supplements. They do not have to make a choice between two bad options, red yeast, rice, or a uh, prescription uh, statin drug. So the bottom line, lots of lessons to be learned here, ranging from the fact that um, natural does not always mean better and uh, not pharmaceutical drug as an alternative doesn't always mean better and the risks and benefits of all of these things have to be considered and um, I blame a lot of the problems with the supplement business on the FDA. Uh, another story for a different day but they, they put themselves in a position to not be able to regulate um, supplements properly. They've done such a terrible job regulating drugs I don't think we need to give them anything else to do but it's made a lot of the uh, purchasing of supplements literally like the wild, wild west. It's a bad, um, bad environment for consumers to pick some of these products. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.